ahead and do a turn. This, guys, I can't take credit for. This, uh, you guys saw, the guys that were at the, uh, the B3 booth when I did my show earlier today, I started doing a technique, uh, balayage. Have you guys seen on my Instagram why I call it balayage or what that means? It's vivid balayage. I'm not misspelling it, I swear to God. It's a technique that sort of like marries natural with fashion color and it's a good intro to people that are scared for full on fashion color. Because you have those clients or models, depending on what your what scenario it is, that don't want to dive in. So this is a good answer for that. She started out with a level, your natural level is five, six, right? And she had some old, um, like balayage or grown out highlights. And so we toned the top just to get rid of some brassiness. I used Wella Color Touch, it's not my normal line, but I had it because it was the host line. Wella Color Touch, eight stroke seven one, two parts, like a double, um, double formula of, de de what am I trying to say here? Developer, thank you, because I wanted to shear it out and I didn't want it to go too ash. So that's what I put at the top and then we just used violet shampoo on the ends. And she was not as light as you guys think she needs to be. She was, you know, light on the ends, but this at the top, this was like a level seven to a level eight to a level nine. And that's what we put the fashion color on. And are the, are the guys that actually applied this on stage out in the audience? And if you guys have watched, you poor little angel. She's been to two of my shows today. She's like, <laughs> shut up saying the same stuff. But I brought people up from the audience to actually apply this. And so they did the technique that I was showing them. They did this, I did not do this. I did the tiniest little piece that's it. She has an undercut too that Ricky Zito cut. Oh, there, I forgot about that. There she has an awesome badass undercut under there. Um, I did a tiny, tiny little piece over here. They went up, did their thing. So they're not here, but they're badasses. So let's give them a hand. A lot of clapping. There's gonna be a lot of clapping for the show. I apologize in advance, but that's how you show love. And so, and you guys can holler and say whatever you wanna say. So let's, let's have a good time. Thank you, lady. Thank you, Sam. All right, love gorgeous. Love, Sam. All right, look at this beauty. Look at Miss Victoria. I freaking love her. Come out here, do you a little turn, and when you turn around, there you go. Let your hair be majestic. <laughs> I freaking love this. I'm like, I don't even, it's not like I look at this like, oh, I did this. I look at this like, holy shit, that turned out. Thank God I didn't mess up every time. Every single time I do that, you're not alone, I do that. So my concept for this, and by the way, all my models are hairstylists, so let's give them all amazing love. You don't have to clap that, but clap for that. They're all hairstylists. They were all open. This lady here flew from Washington to be my model for this, wasn't gonna go to a premiere, so these people are amazing for doing this. So I wanna do a rainbow route. That was like my concept here. I'll split this and show you the other way, like you were, yes. So you guys see, I basically did like a neon Roy G. Biv. And really all I did was a shadow root. I use Kenra Neons mostly for like neons, but this is diluted one part Kenra Neons to one part clear. I always dilute, mostly everything. And then I used about, uh, about a quarter of an ounce of B3 in every single formula. And then I used charcoal diluted with clear, melting down from each, every, like each color that I chose at the root. And at the end, I used the same color as the top of that section. And when I did my sections, let me show you. Just gonna, how did I do this? This was a long day yesterday. All right, so we did the top first. Let me get you to spin around. And Erica Keelan, do you guys know her by, the, by chance? She has amazing imagery. Um, she helped co-color several of these girls. So she's amazing. She's not here, but she's so good. So I would take this section right here of the purple. Think of it like a halo. Like it's all around this front hairline. I just applied it at the root, about an inch down, varying from an inch to an inch and a half, an inch, an inch and a half, so it doesn't look like a hard line of demarcation and then melt it into the diluted charcoal and then melt it into the purple again on the ends. And you really gotta get in there, like really, really emulsify and really like spread the hair apart because direct dyes don't do the work for you, you do the work, so you really, really have to get in there. But I was saying in my other class, you can overdo it. You ever see direct dyes go milky or like clear or cloudy? You're overworking it and the direct, like the dye part is separating from the conditioning agent. So don't overwork it, just get more product. So you're beautiful, I love you. Thank you, lady. Oh, I'm gonna give you a hug. I'm sweating my balls off up here, I'm sorry guys. These lights are so, so hot. Okay, come on down, my lady. Sorry, my language, I apologize in advance, I'm a little crude, I'm gonna try to keep it on the low. Yes, you're a crowd favorite, or do you have like every one of your people here, or you just, oh, like everybody cheered, of course. Everybody's like going nuts for you. I didn't know if you had like your Maybe they just love the you. color. Oh, she's like, thanks, you're weird. All right, so this is actually a shine line technique. Redkin, who came on before me and did amazing work, I would say they were the first ones to come up with a shine line, but they did it in natural color. They did like brunette, copper brunette. 
why not take that just with anything else? Like I said, balayage, whatever technique it is, you can kind of change it you know, up your way and kind of translate that to fashion color, which I did. And this is hard, it's hard to really see the graphic nature, I guess, of this technique, but you guys, do you get the gist of a shine line? What it kind of is, it's like one color, another color in the mids, and another color at the ends. Typically, it's something light, like a, you're shining a flashlight, like a laser light was another name for it. But why not switch it up and do light, dark, light, or dark, light, I just said that. It was the same thing I said, but you know what I mean. Switch it up and try something different and just have the, the concept of the technique, but do it your own way. I'm trying to find a section here that shows it. You guys get the gist. I used charcoal at the root, and then I used alternating from pink and blue, like in horizontal sections. And that's why it's not a hard shine line, because those are hard to nail. If you screw up and you don't blend perfectly, it, you have to, they have to style it every single day, curl it every single day, flat iron it every single day. So why not do it just a little bit more subtle, get the same technique, but have it be more wearable? Because I'm about some wearable stuff. Not everything's like in your face, like neons all over their head, like a clown wig, everybody. No, not, you know, you could definitely do something sweating. Let me take a breath. I'm sweating. <sighs> okay, I'm like mumbling and like sweating at the same time. Okay, I feel better now. Thanks, guys. Okay, so that's my lady. Thank you, Sydney. I appreciate it. Shayna. Shayna, I'm sorry. Now look at her. Look at Kat. Mustafa? Are you guys familiar with Mustafa and his waves? Wait to, just wait. This is freaking epic. So Erica helped me co-color this, and the fact that you can be two separate people with completely different ways of doing things and still come up with something cohesive just means collaborations are fun, first of all, and definitely get your creative juices flowing, and it's just fun to work with other people, but by doing a certain technique, it's like, I don't know, it's all perspective. This is all perspective and it's art and there's not any certain way to do it. And I think you should experiment. I think you should have fun. And I think you should take risks. And her and I took a lot of risks, me and Erica, because she was like, do literally whatever you want to do. So, and I added, did, she, did he take the extensions out or no? So these are a few extensions. I had a bunch of blonde ones that I was sent over a year ago and I was testing products. So she has some random ones in there but very, very few. But you guys can see, I guess the, let me see if I can find a section where I can actually show you what the technique is. Random color melts, that's all this is. Like I would take a section about yay big. Let me get one that's just pink. About yay big, I'd say, something easy to work with. And then you pick one color, and then you take clear if you want, if it just wants to be a gradient. What I like doing with clear, you guys see like shadow roots where it's like a darker color at the top and it goes down to blonde. Do you know how hard it is to put that color on and try to diffuse it and get that soft blend from like intense color into nothing? Use clear, clear's your best friend. So use a direct dye clear, not an oxidative clear, and you actually use that to diffuse instead of another color or a lighter color, and then it'll eventually just go into the prettiest fade ever. This one isn't super like in your face, this is dark, this is light, because it wasn't exactly what I did, but at the very end I used clear and melted my little heart out. Everything in here, I didn't use a brush. Eric actually did the shadow root, which is the Kenra charcoal, but everything else you just use your hands. You don't need a brush. Sorry, Framar, I love Framar, but you don't need brushes for everything, honestly. I feel like, like I said, with, with using your hands, you can spread apart the hair and physically get it in there, so that's my preferred way to do it. Give her one more round of applause because she's beautiful. <laughs> love that. It's hard to pick a favorite. All right, my girl. That's what happens when I instantly forget people's name, my girl or my sweetie. Macy. Took Macy. All right. Do you guys like this more natural sort of, I'll use lived in, Ramirez Tran, lived in vibe. Oh, God, you guys are all so incredibly beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna turn you around. Same concept as Sam here. She had an old grown out balayage and she actually had a lot of warmth in hers. And so I tried to use like charcoal tones and blue tones just at the top. You can overlap under the natural color. It's not gonna hurt anything. In fact, it's gonna kinda like neutralize the warmth a bit. And then you just take random sections, much like I did with cats, and you just, with your hands, melt them together. No foils, no mesh, no partitions. It's fun. Like, I really don't overthink this. I really, really don't. And with this, you don't need to touch this up. Like, you don't have to worry about okay, how do I duplicate this 100%? You don't have to. It's gonna fade and it's gonna tell you what to do. If you pick up a section, again, very random, very organic, no like 
hard um, diagonal or horizontal part. It's just literally, I, I clip this up, I take a random section, and if this is faded out three or four weeks and there's a hint of green left or a hint of something, that tells me I can do green again, I can do blue, I can do anything in a cooler family, or I can remove it. You don't have to remove everything, you just work with what's left. And that's not a stressful way to look at this type of color. And you also don't have to do the same look every time. It's just it's relax, a relaxed way of looking at vivid hair color, for sure. So thank you. Macy. You're oh, she has an undercut. I just totally told on her. An undercut that's growing out. I'm about to deal with that, and I'm not looking forward to it at all, but it's okay. Here we go. Thank you, Macy. Okay. Who do we have? You got your Are you hiding? <laughs> Come on, Kylie. I need a sip of water. I feel like I'm be like Ace Centuri. You know where his lips get all like that? Okay. Come on down. Did somebody watch, did they know what I'm talking about with the Ace Centuri where he's like, what is, I almost did it. I need a sip of water real quick before, can I? You need water? Yeah. Water for Rebecca, please. You're like, going like that? I need, so it's I on focus. its way. <laughs> okay, I'll be fine. All right, so this, honestly, guys, I never do this, but I sketched out ideas because I did eight models yesterday with some help. Eight models is a freaking lot for anybody to do in one day for a show. So my sketch had a lot of graphic like squares. Like I took a section of, oh, thank you. You're like my favorite. I appreciate you. You already were before this water. Thank you guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay. Anyhow, oh, I feel like a million times better. Hold it. No, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rock this water for a while. All right, so I'm gonna turn her real quick. I wanted pink to be her base, and I wanted it to veil over the top, and I wanted it to come from underneath, too, because I didn't want the whole thing to be really graphic like I originally planned. My sketch, I wish I could show you guys, but it was like the profile of someone's hair, like the surface of their hair, with tons of different colored squares, kind of like pop art, because that's the show for BTC's um, Cut, Color, and Style, is pop art's the um, concept. So I looked at Andy Warhol, and you know how he has the multiple squares of like Marilyn Monroe or whatever. I was like, let me translate onto the hair, but not go deliberate like drawing Marilyn's face or whatever, which is an art in itself to paint on hair, but that's not what I want to do for this. So I took a sub, what happened? I don't know what's happening. Okay, so I took a section here, I'm just gonna kind of show you a section that was as wide as the foil. And so I painted, this I did use a brush for, and you have to use a really thin section because of saturation issues. So I painted little squares that were just about the width of the brush. Some came down and were double the size, some were short, some were three times the size. But I just did different panes of like stained glass or squares. And I really thought that it would be super graphic. Like even when it was flat ironed, I was like, okay, I wanna see squares there. It didn't translate, it's way more soft, and I'm okay with that. It's more soft, it's more diffused. Sometimes when you go, thank you, I saw you mouth that and I appreciate it. Sometimes when you, um, when you, I don't know, shoot for something too graphic. Again, it's one of those things where they have to style it every day. And I don't know if Kylie would have enjoyed flat ironing or whatever. I actually talked to her stylist and she's like, so how do I get this out? And I'm like, oh God, no. But you know, it's, it's something a, a, lot, a lot more wearable than what I originally planned. It happens, that's what happens in hair color and we're stoked on it, thank God. So give her a hand too. Thank you. Last but not least. 